Just got it. The iPhone 3GS. 3GS? No way. Yeah. I, I'm still playing with the, well, was playing with the 3G. Yeah, I know. It kind of sucks, eh? It just came out last year and they've already got a new one, but uh, Apple needed the money, so what can you do? No, you stood in line last year to get the 3G. You said you weren't going to do that again. How'd you get it already? I didn't wait in line. So then, how'd you get it? Let's just say I got it from a friend. Uh, you know what? Let's get this phone to Sam right away, though, so we can do a teardown. As many of you know, the iPhone 3GS is the latest version of the iPhone 3G. As we see Sam take apart the iPhone 3GS, it's easy to see the resemblance in design and build to the 3G. The design of the phone is the same, and even as Sam takes it apart, it breaks away in the same manner as its predecessor. Which is to be expected. Most analysts, including myself, predicted that the iPhone 3GS wouldn't stray from its original design too much. However, that doesn't mean that Apple hasn't made any improvements to the original with this new phone. In terms of features, it's essentially the same phone, with some noticeable differences. However, these differences allow it to be called new. Firstly, there's the promise of more speed with this phone. Speed in the sense that a new processor has been chosen that is twice as fast as its predecessor. It's also faster in the sense that it now supports 7.2 megabits per second for its 3G standard, improving the speed of data transmission on the phone. The iPhone 3GS also features a new camera, upgrading itself to a 3.0 megapixel sensor with software that accommodates autofocus, auto exposure, and auto white balance. The iPhone 3GS also now has a magnetometer, which works with the Compass application, and it's now integrated into the new Google Maps app. Lastly, the Apple 3GS features a new battery, and most importantly, a new operating system, Apple OS 3.0. That OS, however, will be made available as an upgrade to iPhone 3G owners. Taking a look inside the phone, the first Apple-branded part we see is one labeled with K2132C2, P0-50F. Before we even decap this device, that numbering again told us that this was a Samsung part. Apple again went with Samsung to design its application processor. And again, it's in a package on package device. This new processor is Samsung's S5 PC100 processor in one package placed on top of a Samsung memory package. This device features upgraded graphics and video processing as the Samsung manufactured SoC also contains the ARM A8 Cortex CPU. Infineon again finds themselves a big winner in the IC selection, having four of their products designed in, or selected again for the iPhone 3GS. Like the iPhone 3G, the device marked with 338S0353 makes its reappearance, as when it was decapped, it was the same Infineon UMTS transceiver used within the iPhone 3G. Also making a comeback is this device marked with SMP little i3, the PMB6820, otherwise known as the Smarty Power 3i Power Management IC, or XPMU. The GPS for the 3GS is also the same as the 3G, with the Infineon PMB2525 Hammerhead AGPS being seen here with the package markings of 2525V1.07U. Looking closer at the baseband processor labeled 337S3754, Semiconductor Insights identified two die within the package. Interestingly, still a design win for Infineon. Next, we see three more devices that have been slightly modified on the iPhone 3GS that you will also be able to see in the original 3G. These three devices seen here all are manufactured by Triquin Semiconductor, and again, they are all WCDMA-HSUPA PowerM duplexer modules. All three, however, are newer revisions of the parts seen in the 3G, as you can tell by the A at the end of each part number. 
And moving along the board, we come across the Skywork Solutions Sky 77340 power amplifier module. This device is a major win for Skyworks as it has been used by Apple since the introduction of the original iPhone back in 2007. And to close out the originals, the accelerometer in the iPhone 3GS is also the same as the 3G, with SD Micro having its LIS331DL designed into the device. Now, let's look at some of the device differences in the new iPhone 3GS. There's been quite a few changes on the memory side. Let's take a look at some of the differences. First, we see the serial flash on the 3GS being provided by a new manufacturer. On the previous iPhone 3G, the 8 megabit serial flash device was manufactured by SST. Not anymore, as Atmel has replaced SST with their AT25DF081 device. Next, we see that Mnemonics has upgraded their multi chip package. It's NOR memory from Mnemonics, packaged with Alpita DRAM. What makes this so interesting is that this is the second big design win for Alpita in recent weeks, as their embedded DRAM found itself in another highly publicized phone launched in the last two weeks, the Palm Pre, which we also did a teardown on. Lastly, we see that Toshiba again is providing the main flash memory for the iPhone. However, this time, we see a package with the marking of TH58NVG7D2ELA89. What makes this unique is that that corresponds to 128 gigabits of memory, the 16 gigabytes that make up the iPhone 3GS storage. This would be the largest single IC memory device that we have ever seen. When we took a look inside via SI's DCAP process, we're able to see four 32 gigabit die packaged together. Again, another first. Another major design change in the iPhone 3GS is the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi capability. Previously on the iPhone 3G, the Bluetooth device was the CSR BlueCore 6, and the Wi-Fi came via Marvell 88W8686 device. Now, the iPhone 3GS has replaced both ICs with a single chip from Broadcom, the BCM4325. This device combines 802.11BG Wi-Fi with Bluetooth 2.1 for a single solution. So that's a look inside the iPhone 3GS. Uh, Greg, any comments about the phone in particular? Um, you know, compared to the 3G, it has some additional functionality, but you can download the new software uh, that covers that. Inside, few differences, not really a lot. So if you have a 3G already, maybe not worth it, other than for the extra storage space. Uh, if you don't have an iPhone or you have the original iPhone, um, probably not a bad idea. Okay, so there you go. Not a lot of new bells and whistles. It's an evolution, not a revolution. That about does our teardown today. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please email us at teardowntv at semiconductor.com.